Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to begin by saying how proud I am, how pleased I am, and how grateful I am for the work that was done by the members of the committee. This is an extremely difficult and serious issue for Canada. It's the third time that the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians addresses this issue. We have, for Canadians and for parliamentarians, we have painted a picture of the lay of the land when it comes to foreign interference in the country. We have made a number of prescriptions to remedy the situation, recommendations to improve the situation. We have evaluated the government's performance over the last several years. That was the central thrust of what the review is. Now you have to understand, and Canadians have to understand, that the members of the committee are bound by the Security of Information Act. The members of the committee waived their parliamentary privilege for the privilege to sit on this committee. That means if they inadvertently reveal information, they can be prosecuted. The members of the committee have spoken to and through the review, as we always do with every subject that we undertake. Anything that we can say about these issues is in the review. We cannot add any more. Every word, every sentence, every paragraph has been through a very significant and detailed redaction process. It is one that takes time. Right now, the membership of the committee, and as its chair, the committee is not permitted to expand on the language in the review. <laughs> Tout ce, qui, tout ce qui touche l'ingérence étrangère que nous avons décrit est dans le texte du rapport. Mais il y en a pas vraiment controversé sur l'implication des députés. Il se retrouve à la quasi-fin de votre rapport. Qu'est-ce qui est controversé dans votre rapport? Paragraphe 164. C'est assez étonnant, comme si c'était presque un détail. Pourquoi c'est construit comme ça? Je ne peux pas vous donner plus d'informations. Le texte a été revu par le comité pour des heures et des heures et des heures. La, 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 la procédure de caviardage a été effectuée pendant des mois. Tous les mots, toutes les, les phrases et tous les, les paragraphes sont choisis et l'emplacement dans le rapport est délibéré. I'm sorry. The members of the committee are bound to this Security of Information Act for the rest of their lives. So the names will never come out? We, we can't listen. The question of whether or not this issue is followed up on is a question rightly put to the RCMP. And it is up to the RCMP to decide on the basis of any intelligence or evidence they may have in their possession whether they're going to take steps or not. I'm not in a position to comment for what the RCMP will or will not do. How do you think the report reflects on parliamentarians, though, when, in the individual's argument, they're not named? Do you think that that's discursions about members of parliament? I haven't looked at that question, and the committee hasn't examined that question. We did our job. Look, it's important to remember. The committee is not an intelligence collector. The committee is not an intelligence assessor. The committee receives intelligence from our intelligence collectors and assessors, and it relies on that information, on that intelligence. And it, it deliberates, it goes through it with a fine-tooth comb, it crafts what it wants to say, and then it is subject to a very arduous redaction process under very objective terms, set out in the law that creates the committee. So we've gone as far as we possibly can. We cannot add anything to what's actually in the written text. Are you concerned? 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 Are
it's important for the government to take the next steps. We're encouraged by Bill C-70, as we say. Many of the recommendations we put out find their way in Bill C-70, including a foreign agent's registry. We're catching up to the Australians, the Americans and the Brits. We're calling for criminal code provisions to deal with foreign interference in nominations. We're asking for nominations and leadership races to possibly be brought under the aegis and auspices of Elections Canada. There are many very positive things that can happen quickly to tighten all of this up for communities. Look, again, the committee's hands are tied. We can only release what we can release. And what we can, the, the committee, since it was founded seven and a half years ago, the members have always tended to want to be more transparent rather than less. We have gone as far as we can in this review to reveal information without being in breach of the Security of Information Act. That's as much as we're going to say. No, 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 the government's How is that I, you'll have to ask the government. I, I, we are encouraged with Bill C-70. We think this is a very positive step forward. And we're also encouraged with the fact that Minister LeBlanc last week has reached out to all members of Parliament, asking them to consider getting briefed by the Sergeant at Arms in terms of what foreign interference is. There's a distinction between foreign influence and foreign interference. All of this is set out in the review. What I would encourage people to do is to read the report. Cover to cover. Can you actually the names of those Pardon me? Who gets to see I'm not in a position to answer that question. Can you assure Canadian voters that none of these MPs will come before them as candidates in the next election? Not in a, not, 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 not in a position to answer that question. As a so are you comfortable having that your party launches an internal review? I don't know anything about that. But, but, no, I'm wondering, as a Liberal MP, do you yes. hope your party takes measures or launches an internal review because even your own report says this might not lead to charges. So should the parties be taking more action to try and figure out who these possible MPs may be to make sure that they're not... Yeah, what, what the review actually says is that this, this may not lead to charges because of the problem we have in Canada with the intelligence to evidence gap. It's very difficult to get intelligence in a courtroom, in the broad daylight of a courtroom, because, of course, this speaks to the protection of sources and methods. Not only sources and methods exercised by Canadian intelligence collectors and assessors, but perhaps even our five partners. Do you feel C-70? Do you feel C-70, the bill that's currently being studied? We think it's an encouraging start. But that doesn't resolve that issue. We think it's an encouraging start. But it's not enough. There's more. There's, look, this is a very... Um, big issue for intelligence law enforcement uh, folks who have been asking for some impr improvement in this area. It is not an easy issue to overcome, but I'm con I think the, we we, the, committee, the committee believes the government is taking this seriously. Monsieur, vous dites que tout est dans le rapport. Je veux juste revenir sur le nombre de parlementaires qui vous êtes. Ça a donné à des gens. C'est délibéré de ne pas dire qu'il y en a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Tout ce qu'on peut dire là-dessus. You're about to head into Liberal Caucus. There's confidential information shared there. Knowing what you know from the NSI COP report, are you comfortable heading in there that that information won't end up in the wrong hands? I'm comfortable working with my colleagues, but I'm also bound by the Security of Information and Intelligence Act. I have a responsibility as the chair, and so do all members of the committee, to remain confidential. This data, this information is classified. Most of this review is predicated on, on highly classified information. I could be prosecuted. Mr. LeBlanc has said that some of the intelligence he interprets differently, that he thinks that some of the intelligence that you did, are you confident in You'd have to yeah, ask him. Ask, I'm not sure what he means. You have to ask him. Mr. McGinty, just on 670, je pense, pense, pense qu'il faut prendre le temps nécessaire pour s'assurer qu'on touche les grandes questions, qu'on aide à résoudre ces problèmes. Notre responsabilité au comité, c'était de, 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 de surface. C'est nécessaire, c'est ça la question.
je ne suis pas en mesure de, 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 de d'évaluer. Je ne je suis pas en mesure de, d'évaluer si ça va être assez de temps. Si on, si, si on siège jusqu'à minuit, s'il y a des jours et des jours de témoignages, ça va aider. Mais je, suis, je ne suis pas la personne responsable. Mais ce n'est pas complet, à votre avis. Il c'est... manque des morceaux. Hein, pour, pour régler cette nous avons de France et la seule chose que je peux vous référer aux recommandations dans le rapport. Oui, mais justement, ça ne semble pas euh, correspondre. On, on ne trouve pas dans ces 60. Demandez au gouvernement. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Are really trying to ignore this or downplay this? How is this not a huge no, deal that no, people are no knowingly one, no one, in the House of Commons elected Marika, officials Marika, are cooperating no with other governments? No one is ignoring the issue of foreign interference. It's being dealt with very appropriately. There's legislation now being brought before the House by the Public Safety Minister on on, on uh, foreign registry. Um, there is, I think, some very important work going on to protect all Canadian institutions. The, with respect to the the information in, the, in that report with, uh, regarding um, any member. I'm not going to comment on it right Can now. I ask you about the St. Paul's by-election? Are you concerned about that? Can I ask you about the St. Paul's by-election? Are you concerned about that seat? It's a pretty safe liberal seat and it seems like it's not that safe right now. I, I'm not sure the, ba- the basis of your assessment on that, but we're all we're working very hard. We have an excellent candidate in St. Paul's and, and I'm very so you're confident. confident you're what are you hearing on the course? I'm very confident. Uh, Learn the names of the people that might have been uh, winning or, or partially winning accomplices with foreign states. Well, Minister Leblanc has been very clear on that. We need to be prudent and respectful of processes. Uh, prudent because this is one piece in a huge puzzle of uh, foreign interference. And I believe that Minister Leblanc has been, again, very good and very clear on how Canadians want the federal government to address that issue. Le ministre Leblanc a été très clair oui, là-dessus. Et, et, et moi, j'ai totalement confiance dans euh, l'intelligence et le bon sens de M. Leblanc. Et on comprend tous que ces informations font partie d'un cadre beaucoup plus général d'informations qu'il faut traiter avec prudence et responsabilité. Et le ministre Leblanc l'a bien expliqué encore aujourd'hui, puis moi je, je suis d'accord avec lui. Mais le premier ministre, il les a, les noms voient-ils extraordinaires? C'est nouveau la question des gérants étrangères. C'est pour ça qu'on met des mécanismes en place. Il faut que tout le monde, tous les partis appuient ces mécanismes. Et euh, Mais vous ne voulez pas savoir si c'est des députés libéraux? Non, votre serviteur, parce que... Moi, je ne sais pas. M. Rodriguez, au sujet de l'immigration, est-ce que, est-ce que vous dirigez vers une entente? Comment on est négociation avec Québec? Il doit y avoir une rencontre prochainement avec Oui, oui, il y a une rencontre très prochainement entre, entre M. Trudeau et M. Legault qui va partir notamment sur la question de l'immigration. Euh, on reconnaît que Québec fait énormément et on est là pour, euh, pour faire appuyer le gouvernement du Québec. Est-ce que le fédéral va s'entendre avec Québec? Ben, je l'espère. Je pense qu'on va arriver euh, avec, avec une offre très intéressante qui tient compte euh, de tout ce que Québec fait. Ça progresse actuellement, donc? Les choses avancent. Est-ce que vous avez un petit commentaire sur la baisse des taux d'intérêt? On aimerait ça encore plus. Vous aimeriez ça encore plus? On en veut des baisses. Madame Roux, vous pouvez diminuer. Est-ce que vous avez l'impression qu'aujourd'hui, il faudrait qu'encore plus, euh, votre famille politique se parle un peu dans le blanc des yeux pour voir plus de possibilités de collaborer avec le centre étranger? Je dirais que c'est ce qu'on fait chaque semaine de se parler dans le blanc des yeux dans le caucus. Mais est-ce que vous avez l'impression que vous avez des noms sur les Ça se passe au caucus. Those decisions have all been communicated. We've made a number of very important decisions uh, over the past years about uh, taking this this issue seriously. This is different? Yes, we also have a public inquiry underway and that will continue. So are you going to wait for the inquiry until next steps or will the Liberal Party conduct a review based on what your own caucus colleagues in this ENSCOM report put forward? The the, uh, government takes, of course, very seriously this issue. 
Uh, Minister LeBlanc speaks for the government on this issue, um, but I would um, challenge anyone to, uh, around the world, and this is a problem we know that is occurring around the world, uh, to see a government that has dealt with this issue as robustly as this one. But I'm but confused, as a there's no MP, clarity on what the next step is. The report, based on thousands of documents, says that mm -hmm. there are MPs, parliamentarians, knowingly colluding or collaborating with other governments. Yeah, and uh, Canadians should be very reassured that there are checks uh, and measures uh, like taken what? daily. Well, we have a very robust, of course, it begins with a very robust intelligence gathering uh, apparatus. And uh, right up to today, where we're uh, going to be talking about C70, a brand new act. But the question is, what happens now? Now that you have the information, I think the question is, what happens now? Before, Mr. Freeland said that qui allait avoir un internal review. Mm -hmm. Donc, est-ce qu'il y en a un? Vous pouvez vous nous prendre? Monsieur Parce qu'il y a des gens qui n'en pas au courant, donc on est sur des clarifiés. Monsieur Leblanc porte le dossier et je tiens à rassurer l'ensemble Mais est-ce qu'il y a un internal review qui a été déclenché? Monsieur Leblanc euh, parle au nom du gouvernement là-dessus, mais les Canadiens doivent être rassurés qu'il y a une série de mesures très, très robustes the, uh, Should the Liberal Party itself be conducting its own uh, internal review? The report I says that it might. That but in English, please. For doing doing stuff in collaboration with foreign states. Should, should we try and clear the air and get these names out there? Yeah, I'm not sure there's a shadow. The report just came out. I was just reading it for the first time last night. Obviously, there are areas that are heavily redacted, and we need accountability. If there are people who have wittingly cooperated with foreign powers, there absolutely has to be accountability, and in some cases, we'll see where that goes. But do you, are you not worried that people are sort of looking to their left and right through the House of Commons right now going, who are these people? Not particularly, no, because we're at the beginnings of this, and for, for me at least, I just read the report for the first time last night, and there's a proper process where, and there's got to be due process for individuals. There's, all I've read is that witting and unwitting, and it's entirely redacted. I don't know who these members are, I don't know what the detailed allegations are, and I think, in fairness, we need serious accountability if someone has actively cooperate with a foreign state. There's got to be due process associated with that. What does that look like? Yes, if someone has actively cooperated, so uh, I forget, it was around paragraph 55 to 58 or so, but at one point they said and in one instance there was a then member of parliament who had a relationship with a foreign agent. Uh, yeah, that person should be named, named in the shorter term, and fuller allegations should be laid out, and we should have proper due process on that. What do you think of the fact that Pierre Polyev has distanced himself from uh, the comments made by the Conservative MP? Not surprising, yeah. because I, I think if he wants to win an election, views like that are anathema to most Canadians. And at the end of the day, we need to make sure we are all firm in our defense of a woman's right to choose. Were you surprised that the MP A appeared on your podcast and B said what he said? I was surprised. I've had many concerns. I've had Aaron O'Toole on my podcast at, so when he was a sitting member, so I wasn't surprised that Arnold joined. I was a little bit surprised that he was uncertain and hesitant and that he felt ambushed by the questions. I mean, he has introduced a petition on protecting the preborn 19 times is what he told me and he's the chair of the pro-life caucus and he's introduced the petition most recently less than a month ago or about a month ago and so you know the first half hour of our conversation was focused on work that we've done collaboratively together but I don't think it was it shouldn't have been it shouldn't come as a surprise that I was going to ask him questions about his parliamentary advocacy. Why did you want to ask him about that in particular? Because he's been vocal about it and it's an area I thought it was interesting in the sense that you've got a, a conservative caucus that used to be quite publicly socially conservative and now they're more quietly socially conservative and what I found most interesting in that interview I know the headlines were disagreement with the leader and, and all that what I found most interesting is when I said well is it a lonely fight in your caucus and he said no it's not a lonely fight at all and I found that most interesting because there is there are more social conservatives than I was certainly aware of back to the names of the MPs that have Willingly or wittingly. Wittingly, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, do, do you think, just to be clear, that they should be named, even though they have not been, or as far as we know, been accused of anything, of any wrongdoing? Should the Prime Minister who has, has seen those names give them 
give them without any other details or without any due process? No, I, I think if uh, there may be different circumstances. The, the example I gave was that one instance where there was a, a specific relationship between a then MP and uh, a foreign agent. That particular case, which the committee noted was of great concern, strikes me that that particular case where there are some more details attached to it, there should be accountability where the member's named and full details are divulged and there's a proper process for it. Uh, in the, in the shorter term than the longer term, for sure, right. yeah. I mean, I just read the support the for the first time last night. Who, who should name him? Like? The committee should not name him. No, it should be, a, if charges are to proceed or there's going to be a, a proper proceeding in some way, it, I, th I think there should be due process in that way. I, I, I do worry about, in that particular case, it seems damning from what I've read, even, even though it's heavily redacted. In other cases, we just saw wittingly or unwittingly. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the details are. And if we're to have a serious conversation, it should be less of a witch hunt. It should be more serious due process where there's proper accountability. Should, there be a liberal party, should the Liberal Party be looking into this on its own? Because even the NSCOP report says that it might not lead to charges. So if there are no charges, should the Liberal Party start its own process to look into this in case one of the MPs or senators, well, you have no senators, but one of the MPs mentioned uh, is a liberal. If anyone on the liberal side has wittingly cooperated with foreign power, if there aren't to be public charges in some way, our own party should take that with the greatest seriousness. And I, based on the comments I've seen, the discussions I, I've had, I, I trust that they are going to take it seriously. What about yeah. nominations? Do you think the party's nomination process should change? There was a fair amount of criticism of that in the NSI cop report. So I have said publicly before, and I'll say it again, and I know we're going to have c conclusions and recommendations from the Foreign Interference Commission, but we should have parties that set rules of the game for their nominations, but Elections Canada should enforce those rules, because that, that is an area that I have, I, I've lived through nominations, and I do think they're the, the, the least protected areas of our democracy, and Elections Canada should be part of enforcing those rules and operating those, those nomination contests. You're about how, to head, how, how you're about confident? To head. You're about to head into caucus, you're going to hear confidential information. The NSI cop report says that there are MPs, they don't say with which party, but who share confidential information with the Indian government. Does that alarm you? Does that mean caucus will be difficult to make work? I don't think so, because the, uh, the party itself will be aware of the names, the Prime Minister will be aware of those names, and they will be managing this with diligence and I have confidence in, in that leadership and ensuring that that is a safe space. How uh, confident are you that the Liberals will um, get the Toronto uh, St. Paul's by-election? Very confident. Yeah. I'm also confident we'll win Beaches East York even though I'm not running. You're walking into caucus, there's a report that says MPs and Senators, I know Senators walking in caucus, but MPs may have been feeding information to foreign agents. So are you concerned at all? Are you looking around the caucus room saying who, who might this be? Well, I think Canadians are concerned whenever you see a report like that. It's obviously uh, uh, worrisome and that's putting it mildly. Um, Canadians need to have an expectation and um, it reflects poorly on the rest of us. If it's one or two, we either in the Senate or the House of Commons, um, and those names aren't out there. It's going to reflect. Do you, do you want to have the same? 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 Do you want to do you think that those people should be known? Do you, like, would you not like sure. to know who they are? Why not? No. no. I, I, David's got a good report. It's been useful to us. Stage the um, stage it as as necessary. And it needs to be done properly. And I think he's done the right thing and alerting us to it. But uh, at this time, at this point, no names. I also wanted to ask you about the St. Paul by-election. The Liberals seem to be a little bit more competitive there than they may have been in the past. What do you think that says about the party? And are you concerned you're going to lose that seat? Um, I'm not concerned that we're going to lose the seat. Um, it is competitive. Um, and, uh, and it's an important seat. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of, how should we say, intersecting issues there that are unique to St. Paul's. Um, and it's, it's a fight, but, and we're, we're up for the fight. I mean, that's a seat that didn't even get lost back when the Liberals went down to the, you know, the I know, bottom. I was there. I know you were. I was there. Um, so what does it say that it is, it is now uh, in trouble? I mean, does that mean that the party's in more trouble now than it even was in 2000? No, I, 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 don't, I don't agree with that thesis. I think it is a unique intersection of, of um, issues, particularly like around, well, particularly around the Middle East. Thank you. Okay. Are you worried that the knives are going to come out for Mr. Trudeau? Are we? If the liberals were to lose that seat. That's a big, that's a big if, uh, hypothetical question that uh, after 27 years you don't ask answer. 
No, uh, Mr. Trudeau is the leader of the Liberal Party until Mr. Trudeau ceases to be the Liberal Party. Other, otherwise, you just end up in some sort of frivolous, speculative exercise. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like a parlor game around here. <laughs> I actually still don't have any more details than anyone else does about the end. Do you want more details? I think all Canadians are curious, absolutely, but I'm going to have to leave it a bit to people who know better how to divulge that kind of But are you not concerned that by not naming the people who are in this report that all of you are under suspicion? I, I'm just trying to think about that because I do, I think that everybody wants to know. I, I agree with you, people want to know, um, but what the security clearances are on what they're doing, what the investigations are, I don't know the details of that. Well, are you yes. comfortable going into the caucus room knowing that maybe one of your colleagues has collaborated with the foreign government? I'm, I'm comfortable going in there right now. <laughs> I'm asking about the same call, same call by election. Can I ask you about the MP caucus room? Are you concerned that there's MPs that might be in your caucus or that are not named, that we don't know who they are? Fine then. All I'm doing is, it's, uh, I have full faith in our security agency. I'm sure they're doing their work and they will continue to do it. Are you worried that it's casting a distortion on all MPs by not knowing who these people are? No, I, I think nobody should be worried because. You no, know, I, I have confidence in most of the MPs uh, you know, that are here, and there might be one or two, so that does that. Uh, besides that, uh, it's all good. But one or two isn't enough to make you want to know who they are? Let the security agency find out. Do you think MPs who are, who are found out for being involved with foreign interference, should they not run again? I'm asking you because you, you've been an MP for a while in the, lo you know, the Lower Mainland, mm -hmm. Vancouver. You probably heard things. What do you think? Well, in fact, uh, you know, our, our office was one of the first to raise the issue because my conservative uh, opponent in the last election, who's a friend of mine, uh, was talking to me right after the election that uh, he felt that there had been some, uh, you know, some things going on. Uh, and so I, I, I think, generally speaking, everybody likes to win fair and square. Most people do. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I have no concept of who these people might be. I don't think the report, which I'm just plowing through now, uh, says much of anything. Um, I, it, it, it's something that I think needs to be looked into, obviously, a little bit more deeply by House leaders, whips, etc., etc. Uh, you know, we, we have the uh, example of Mr. Dom, who, you know, recused himself from, uh, you know, from caucus and, and is, is proceeding, you know, down a line that I think, uh, and, and his experience is instructive here, because in our realm, an allegation is exactly the same as a conviction and a hanging, right? So it's uh, very, sorry, very I'm difficult. Sorry, Mr. Hardy, about, about, about witch hunts that may not come after perhaps you personally, but may come after someone else in Greater Vancouver, because Greater Vancouver is a place we you know, naturally pick on because of what we've seen tracking through everything so far. Yeah, I, I mean. That, that is the point, you know. Uh, I, I think fair process is, is uh, clearly always, always must be a fundamental value, okay? Uh, and, and so uh, fair process in something like this is, is absolutely critical because of the nature of the, you know, of the environment. Uh, somebody's career could be totally ruined by uh, a frivolous uh, accusation or comment, you know. I think that if somebody gets charged, absolutely. Okay, there you go. Uh, but until that time, you know, let's let's be careful, but let's be thorough. Thank you for stopping. Do you think, All right. Uh, do you sure. think the Liberal Party should be conducting its own internal investigation? Because even the ANSICOP report says that there's a likelihood this might not lead to charges, so we may never know who allegedly may be involved in, the, in passing information on to foreign states. Yeah, th uh, this I don't know. I mean, uh, that's... So we're coming up on an election, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it, it's a very hypothetical question, and uh, I, I've asked my share of but, hypothetical but what, questions, but I, I don't, I can't answer that. I, it's I don't not know. hypothetical to ask whether the party itself should be looking into whether or not any current MPs or candidates might have been involved in this. Well, every party should do that. Everyone. So, yeah. Do, do you know if the Liberal Party is doing that? I, I couldn't don't. tell you, no. No. I don't know. Thanks so much. All right. Appreciate Take it. care. Thank you. All right. Okay. So what do you think about the foreign interference business? Should uh, should people not run again if they're found out to be linked to foreign interference? Uh, if asking because you're 
Vancouver area where there's been all sorts of things alleged out there? If they're linked, of course they shouldn't run again. So I think the threat is real. We should know that. And uh, it's ever evolving. And I think um, if you look at some of the measures that are being brought in, like uh, MP Dollywall's motion, uh, motion 112, that's an important one uh, to that targets extortion and things like that. And then C70, of course. Good afternoon. Good to see everyone. Um, I'd like to start by quoting the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada, who said that today's decision was welcome news. And I'd also like to echo the Governor of the Bank of Canada, who said this was a moment for us to enjoy. The Bank of Canada's decision to lower the interest rate truly is welcome news for Canada and for Canadians. Our government has an economically responsible plan. We have been working really hard to create the economic conditions which would make it possible for the bank to lower rates. And today we see the fruit of that hard work. Canada is the first G7 country where interest rates have been lowered. Our economic plan is working, and that is really welcome news for Canada and Canadians. Aujourd'hui, la Banque du Canada a pris la décision de réduire le taux d'intérêt. C'est une très bonne nouvelle pour le Canada et pour les Canadiens et les Canadiens. Nous avons un plan économique responsable. Nous avons travaillé fort pour créer les conditions qui permettront aux banques, euh, à la banque de réduire le taux d'intérêt. Aujourd'hui, on voit le résultat de ce travail acharné. Le Canada est le premier pays dans le G7 de réduire le taux d'intérêt. C'est une très, très bonne nouvelle pour les Canadiens et Canadiens pour le Canada. Notre plan fonctionne. Merci beaucoup. Ms. Freeland, can you please answer on the point of your parents? Nous sommes en dessous sur la baisse, pour directeur. C'est une bonne nouvelle pour les Canadiens, cette annonce-là. Oui, ben c'est une très bonne nouvelle, évidemment. C'est une nouvelle qui est cohérente avec ce qu'on a, qu a vu dans les dernières semaines, la chute du taux d'inflation. Ceci étant dit, il reste encore beaucoup de travail à faire et beaucoup de Canadiens qui en arrachent. Et c'est pour ça qu'on va continuer à investir dans les soins dentaires, dans les soins de santé, construire plus de logements plus rapidement et plus abordables. Parce que même si c'est une bonne nouvelle, il y a encore beaucoup de choses à faire. M. Trudeau sera dans votre circonscription lundi prochain pour rencontrer M. Lebeau en immigration. Et vous les attendez on est toujours très content quand M. Trudeau vient à Québec, d'autant plus qu'il vient à Québec cette fois-ci pour une rencontre officielle avec M. Legault. On sait que les gens de Québec s'attendent à ce que ces rencontres officielles entre les deux premiers ministres se passent le plus possible à Québec. Et il va y avoir des discussions importantes, oui, sur l'immigration, sur mais aussi sur tous les autres enjeux sur lesquels on travaille pour le profit des, Cana des Québécois et des Canadiens. Est-ce qu'il y aura des annonces? Est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose qui va débloquer, qui va ressortir de ça? Ça fait un bout de temps que Québec demande des, des, de l'action, de l'argent aussi sur l'immigration. Est-ce qu'il y aura des résultats d'annonces? Il y en a eu déjà beaucoup d'actions. Quand, quand on voit ce qui s'est passé au cours des derniers mois sur les transferts accrus en matière d'appui à la francisation, le 700 millions de dollars par année qui continue à croître à tous les ans pour aider le Québec à franciser les nouveaux arrivants, c'est important pour les gens de la région euh, inclus. On a vu ce qui s'est passé pour le visa pour les Mexicains, ça donne des résultats, ça réduit euh, la pression pour le Québec d'accueillir les demandeurs d'asile. On, on voit aussi ce qui se passe, c'est que de plus en plus, euh, de ces demandeurs d'asile arrivent maintenant en Ontario. C'est bien, c'est un, une pression pour l'Ontario et c'est une pression moins importante Monsieur pour le, le Québec. Monsieur le demande davantage, veut d'autres gestes concrets et de l'argent. Est-ce qu'on doit s'attendre à ce qu'il y ait des, des débouchés, des annonces? Là, on toujours, pas... toujours plus à faire et on va voir ce qui va, qui va sortir là, lors de cette rencontre la semaine prochaine. Merci beaucoup. Oui, c'est le 4,75, c'est le chiffre du jour. Je pense que les gens vont être très contents, ça va dans la bonne direction. L'enjeu numéro un des gens, c'est vraiment le coût de la vie. Et ça, là, je pense que c'est un coup de pouce 
à toutes les familles à travers le pays. C'est le coup de pouce dont les familles avaient besoin. On rentre à la période de l'été, on rentre dans la période des vacances. Moi, je pense que c'est vraiment là, le, le, le coup de pouce dont on avait tous et tout besoin. Politiquement, ça veut, je que vous avez besoin de ce coup de pouce-là aussi, politiquement. Ben, écoutez, moi, je pense surtout aux gens. T'sais, vous savez, depuis longtemps, depuis la, la pandémie, on a été... Euh, dans une période où on avait un taux d'inflation relativement élevé, taux d'intérêt élevé, alors que là, on voit que les indicateurs sont à la baisse. T'sais, toutes les familles, aujourd'hui, sont, sont heureuses parce qu'on sait que 4,75, ben, c'est le chiffre dont les gens vont se faire parce que ça permet, évidemment, vous savez, c'est les prêts automobiles, c'est les prêts hypothécaires. Ça vient de donner un peu l'espace. Les gens disent qu'on a besoin un peu d'espace, on arrive à l'été parce que ça permet de mettre plus d'argent dans les poches des gens. On sait que le taux d'intérêt, ça a un impact sur à peu près tout quand les gens financent l'achat d'une maison, d'une automobile, même de meubles ou des, des choses comme ça. Donc, 4,75, c'est le chiffre du jour. Est-ce que le prix des maisons pourrait monter, si vous l'avez dit, plus facilement que ça? Écoutez, je pense qu'aujourd'hui, la, la grande préoccupation, quand vous regardez chez nous, même aux États-Unis, c'est vraiment la question du coût de la vie. Je pense que c'est ça qui, qui, qui préoccupe les gens, c'est d'avoir euh, plus de revenus disponibles. Alors, je pense qu'aujourd'hui, c'est une grande nouvelle. C'est vraiment... Vraiment, vous savez, c'est cette bouffée d'air frais dont les familles rêvaient là, alors qu'on on entame l'été en se disant « bon, ben là, je pense qu'on est sur l'autre versant de la montagne ». Là, je pense que c'est ça que ça envoie aux gens, et une notion d'optimisme. On vient de traverser euh, depuis la pandémie, c'est là où on est. Sur les gérants, est-ce que vous avez l'impression que c'est le moment, là, en, en plus, de se parler en dormant les yeux pour voir qui sont les parlementaires qui auraient collaboré avec les puissances de grand Moi, je pense que le message que ça envoie, c'est la vigilance. Moi, je l'ai dit, c'est pas un phénomène qui est qui est nécessairement canadien. J'étais avec des collègues en dehors. C'est un phénomène qu'on voit dans les démocraties libérales. Mais ce que ça envoie comme message, c'est plus de vigilance euh, parce qu'on voit qu'il y, y a des États euh, qui, qui essaient de, de miner les démocraties libérales. Alors moi, je pense que le message, c'est la vigilance. Merci à vous autres. Merci. Um, well, first of all, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people were wondering what's going to happen uh, after the, we voted for C11. And what we're seeing is the first decision about its implementation. And uh, this is going to bring new money in the system. It's going to be good for Canadian creators. Uh, of course, there's more decisions to come uh, that will also have an important impact on our creators. Uh, so, uh, of course, I'm, I'm going to be listening for feedback, but I think that uh, it, it's a, a great step in the, in the right direction. Is this 200 million? Is it 230 million? What's, what's the, I've seen some numbers banging around. But... I don't have the exact numbers. I think the CRTC might uh, be able to provide you with the exact numbers. I think it's close to 200 million dollars uh, that they're expecting to see uh, come in the system. And like I said, this is, this is about making the, the market fairer because this base contribution is already being paid for by uh, the distributors and, and others. So this is about foreign companies that are making a lot of money in Canada to participate in the system. It's going to go to creating more content, more Canadian content, that will also most likely end up on, end up on some of those platforms. So it's, it's a system that's worked great in Canada. It allowed us to have the means to our productions and our cultural identity. Uh, and uh, this is, what, it, this is uh, what the legislation is about. Moi, je, personnellement, je n'ai pas été surprise. Euh, ils ont fait part de leurs objections tout au long du processus. Euh, mais c'est un, une question d'équité euh, entre les joueurs canadiens et les joueurs euh, étrangers qui euh, font des affaires ici puis qui évoluent sur le même marché. Euh, et donc, euh, je m'attends à ce qu'ils se conforment aux lois canadiennes et aux directives qui ont été données par le CRTC. Et quand Ben, je ne sais pas ce que vous appelez la taxe Netflix. Euh, je pense qu'il y a des discussions au niveau de l'OCDE et des pays à l'international sur la question des impôts et de la fiscalité pour les géants, les géants du numérique. Euh, ça, c'est une question qui est du côté de ma collègue des finances, mais euh, les discussions, c'était au sujet de la Digital Sales Tax, euh, qui était de 3 donc ça, ça se poursuit. Puis d'ailleurs, il y a des éléments dans le budget à ce sujet-là. Donc la fiscalité, c'est une chose. 
Maintenant, ce qu'on a avec le CRTC puis avec la loi sur la radiodiffusion, c'est plutôt euh, de la réglementation pour s'assurer que les géants du numérique contribuent à la vitalité puis à la diversité linguistique et culturelle ici au Canada.